If you're looking for the versatility of a coilover, but maybe prefer to keep things as budget friendly as possible, well then the SR Performance V2 coilovers that we have here today for the 79 and 93 Fox body Mustang would certainly be worth a look. Now the V2s are gonna pack that mono tube design along with 16 way damping adjustment all for right around 900 bucks. Now when installed, these coilovers will allow you to lower the car anywhere from one to three inches, which is basically gonna give prospective owners the ability to fine tune their ideal ride height or just simply slam the car to the ground if that's what you're after. But first up, let's talk about that height adjustability, which I do think is the biggest plus when considering a coilover setup as opposed to going with a more traditional aftermarket static spring setup that doesn't allow for any adjustability. Now the V2 coils here from SR are again gonna offer that drop anywhere from one to three inches, depending on just how low you wanna go, right? Now again, this will be enough to allow you to go a little bit lower than stock or basically slam the car to the ground if you wanted and really anything in between. Now, a great way to get a feel for the different ride height possibilities with these installed is to browse the dozens of customer submitted images back on the product page at AM if you haven't done so already, because again, you'll see a bunch of Fox body guys and owners out there demonstrating their different ride heights with the V2s installed. So again, check that out if you haven't done so already. But in addition to the height adjustability here with the V2s from SR Performance, you are also getting that 16-way dampening adjustment as well, meaning you can soften or stiffen the ride depending on your personal preference or your driving style. To do so, very simple stuff, guys. You have a knob here up top that you're gonna turn either counterclockwise to soften things up or turn them clockwise to stiffen the damping rate on the shock itself. So again, this is a nice thing to point out because if you're a drag strip regular and you like to play with your suspension settings to maybe improve your launch or your 60 foot times, you can definitely mess with it in that regard. Or if you're just a casual owner and prefer one ride to another, uh, prefer, for instance, I like to ride a little bit firmer in my car, you can do so here with the SR Performance V2 coils, do so quickly and easily. And it's nice that you do get that option here on an entry level coilover such as this which is not something you're always gonna see at coilovers or on coilovers at this price point. Another nice feature to point out here with the SR V2 coilover setup is the mono tube damper design, uh, which I know you can't see right now. It is an internal design, but it is rare to find, again, on such a budget-friendly option. Now, if you guys didn't know, a mono tube shock or strut typically is found on higher end level dampers or coilover kits. And it's a design that's gonna offer more consistent performance, less cavitation. And for that reason, again, it is very popular with performance applications. Now, it's also known that the mono tube is a little bit more durable in the long run compared to a more traditional twin tube design. So again, for all these reasons, certainly worth pointing out here with the SR V2 coils. But as far as what's actually included here with this particular kit, well, again, you are getting four mono tube dampers Four springs, the front spring rate is gonna be 448 pounds up here, while your rear spring rate is 280 pounds. Now the collars are adjustable down here. This is gonna give you your adjustable ride height. And these guys are controlled by the included wrenches or spanner wrenches that are used to turn the collars themselves and adjust your ride height once everything's been installed. Now another nice addition here will be the aluminum top hats included on the fronts. These guys are basically just a built-in caster camber plate which is a nice feature and again will make um, adjustment and alignment much easier once everything's been installed. But now we want to talk about the installation process on your Fox and again the benefit of going with a coilover like this is that you're just simply going to yank out the entire front strut and spring assembly in one piece and replace it with a pre-assembled coilover. There's no need to mess with spring compressors or anything like that. But even with that being the case, the site is still gonna go full pull, three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter here in at least four hours or so to get everything knocked out from start to finish. You're gonna need a good chunk of the toolbox here for this one, gang, including a number of sockets and wrenches. But regardless, to give you a better idea of exactly how this one will go down, check out a detailed walkthrough by an AM customer now. Okay, now on a factory Fox body, this is what you expect to see, a four lug disc brake front setup with your shock, or strut here rather, and your divorced spring there. 
Now, when working around this, it's a, uh, imperative that you have the car safely supported. You know, we have jack stands um, holding the car all the way up around because uh, this is a front and rear kit. Um, but you also need an extra jack to uh, put underneath the lower control arm because this divorce spring, this guy hiding back up in here, uh, can be very dangerous. So you want to take utmost care when removing it. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start by removing the brake caliper, uh, which is a torque setup and on this particular 83 Mustang as a T45. So we're going to go ahead and pull our pins out. They're a little stiff in this older car. Sometimes spinning them with a uh, impact or a socket will help loosen them up. There we go. And with a crowbar um, or a pry bar, we're going to go ahead and loosen the uh, caliper from the uh, spindle. And on this particular car, none of this is going to be reused, but on your car, if you are, you know, just installing the kit, you need to make sure that you safely support the brake caliper. Um, we're going to use a coat hanger because it's uh, steel. You can use a bungee cord or, you know, pretty much anything that will support the caliper so it's not just hanging on the brake hose. So now, uh, with that out of the way, um, you need to remove the sway bar end link, which is this dirty guy here. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this sway bar end link. And on this particular car, it is a 9 16 on top. And the bottom is also a 9 16 Okay, so we've removed this, uh, the nut on the bottom, but there is a significant amount of stress still on this. You know, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can try to pry the bar up and out, um, remove or remove the sway bar end link the same way by prying it up and out. Again, this car we're installing aftermarket Eibach sway bar kit, uh, front and rear, so it'll have all new parts. So we're not gonna be reusing any of this, but if you are, there's another easier way to do this. If you, it's with the nut off the bottom, make sure you have it completely off. When we go to lower this whole assembly down, the lower control arm, it will pull uh, the bushings in the lower parts off the sway bar end link, so we don't have to worry about it. So we're about to do the most important part of this job, which is safely putting a jack under the lower control arm. So we already have an extra jack slid underneath the car. And all we're trying to do here is support the lower control arm. You don't want to jack up too much to upset your jack stands. But you do want to pick somewhere where the jack is some level. Sorry, it's uh, July 4th and you may hear some fireworks during this. So as I was saying, we want to put the jack somewhere we have some leverage. I like the bottom of the spring cup, um, as you can see down there. Uh, just because it allows the jack to grab onto something, because uh, it is going to be under a lot of pressure. So once you get the jack, um, you're gonna, you don't want to jack it up, you just want to put some pressure underneath the control arm. And once you get that in place, then we can actually start to remove the strut. Okay, so now we're at the lower part of the strut assembly, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take these bolts out. Now again, uh, you know, it's very important to have the jack under here because once you take these bolts out, uh, that spring is gonna be pushing pretty hard on this control arm. Uh, so it's up to you which side you want to work on. Uh, if you use an impact on the back, it makes it a lot easier. Um, and in your car, if you leave the steering wheel unlocked, you can move the wheel left and right. On this car, since we're going to replace the lower control arms, I've removed the tie rod. Uh, you don't need to do that uh, per se to do this setup, but since we're removing the lower control arm, we went ahead and did that.
Okay, with the lower control arm, uh, I mean, sorry, the lower strut mounts, uh, the bolts and nuts removed, we're gonna go ahead and fully take off the bolts we loosened earlier to get this shock out of the way. Okay, now as you can see here, uh, sometimes if someone's already been working on your Mustang, you know, um, these older cars go through a few owners usually, uh, these studs will be pretty uh, tight in there. Uh, if it's a factory car, you usually don't have to give it much persuasion, but in this car, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna have to get these out of here. And since we're not reusing it, we can be a little less delicate uh, than normal. And uh, same for you, if you're removing your factory stuff and you don't need any more, uh, a few taps with a hammer on the edge of these while you have a friend uh, either reaching under or reaching under yourself to support this so it doesn't just go crashing down uh, can go a long way. So we're going to go ahead and uh, work this out of here. A um, few taps with a hammer and uh, we'll catch you in just a second. So uh, we went ahead and tapped these down and as you can tell they're almost all the way out. Um, but a little tip here, you know, once you get them low enough you won't be able to hit them with a hammer. And you don't want to damage your car's paint, you know, by wailing away. So if you just use a punch like this and turn the hammer sideways, be careful of your hood, you can just go ahead and tap it out, just like that. Okay, so once we tapped it out, uh, the, the shock just came right down. And we can go ahead and carefully remove this. And uh, now we're at the point, you know, where uh, this spring right now is only being held up by this jack. So again, it's very important to place this jack in a very safe spot. Uh, and we're about to show you uh, this thing being unloaded. And uh, it sounds quite a bit like those fireworks sometimes if you're not uh, careful. Okay, so we've got our lower control arm fully down. Uh, the spring does still have a little bit of tension on it, so sometimes you have to give it a little uh, shove. But you need to be real careful. I'm using a crowbar and standing out of the way. Um, you can see here, um, the spring is fully, you know, tension, but you just got to be careful. And there you go. Okay. So this is how you get the strut. Uh, it's all assembled. Uh, you know, the coilover assembly is all assembled when you get it. Um, you'll see there's four bolt holes that hold the top plate to the actual strut. Um, you know, and this J plate underneath held on by 19 millimeters. So to get this in the car, uh, this top plate and spacers are all going to be up top, and the J plate with the welded on studs is going to come up from the bottom. So to make this all go in the car, we have to disassemble uh, the top piece of this to get these mounting plates off. Now I went ahead with a paint pen and marked where these are. Um, this is just for reference where we can do we get it installed uh, where it. Uh, came and uh, you know once you get this installed you need to get an alignment anyway but this is just to help us sort of get a baseline for it I'll take care not to lose these of course Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove these spacers from the J-plate. And then what I do is we're going to fish these up in there at the same time.
Okay, so we're up here at the top. Uh, we've got our uh, strut held in by its little collar. Uh, just be careful with your fingers when you're feeding it up in there. Uh, the the J plate again is held in um, just by tension. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. Make sure you put your spacers on first. Then your plate. Then your washers. And you're not. Now I'm using a magnetic tray here, uh, and this car is carbureted, so it has the air cleaner on it, nice flat work surface. If you have the fuel injected intake, you know these magnetic trays are even more important. Uh, and there are a couple areas in the bay uh, that you can use. So now that we have our plate on here. Um, we're going to go ahead and try to install uh, these little Allen wrenches. You're going to have to pick up on the strut from underneath, or if you have a, a buddy, they can do it as well. And you don't want to get it really tight at all um, because you definitely don't want the whole strut held by one little tiny bolt. And it's a pretty light setup, so um, it's no stress at all to really hold it with one hand from underneath through the fender well um, while you do this. You could of course disassemble the strut um, rather than fishing it up in there with the plate like I did, but this is just my preferred way of doing it and it's um, easier I think. So in a crisscross pattern, I'm tightening these Allen bolts. I'm not getting them real tight, just snugging them up. Okay. So now we have our top set up. Um, you know, this is how you would set your caster, uh, moving it back and forth, like so. And um, we're going to go ahead, well, it, well these are a bit loose, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the bolts in on the bottom. Okay, so actually before we go down below, we need to go ahead and tighten these up a bit. And they are 19 millimeters. And again, just giving a little power. And this will adjust your caster and camera, like I said, which all needs to be set once the car is done and assembled. So once you're down here, you want to go ahead and put a jack underneath your control arm. Uh, we went ahead and installed uh, some tubular control arms along with a five load spindle. We've got new wheel bearings to go on once we get all done. Um, and we're going to use that jack to mate these two pieces together. Okay, now supplied with this kit are two spacers uh, that go in and they match uh, the strut body. And you'll see here there's an angled piece and a curved bottom. And you want to get all these lined up. Okay, so it takes a little finagling uh, to get this is all lined up. But once you do, you want to make sure you have your spacer on each side of the knuckle, uh, the spindle rather. Um, and you, know, you get these lined up and wiggle them through. Uh, sometimes it helps to turn them a bit. Get the nut on the other side, uh, which is a 15 16th on this car. 
and then uh, either your 13 16 or your 29 millimeter, uh, depending on your year, and go ahead and tighten them up. Okay, so once we have our two uh, strut mounting bolts tight, um, we're going to go ahead and install the sway bar end link. Now this car is going to be eventually getting new links um, because it's getting a new sway bar set up. But, um, so what you want to do is start off with the link like this you know, with your washer and your bushing. And hold it up through here like this. And you want to install a bit like a shish kebab. So you go bushing and washer. And once you get those on there, you've got your sleeve and come around behind here and press it through the sleeve. And again, we're going to go building a shish kebab. So you got our washer and our bushing. I'm going to line it up, push the bolt down through it, and we're going to go bushing and washer. And then we've got our nut. And on this car, these are both 9 16 at the top and bottom. And you can go ahead and zip this together. Uh, like I said, this car is going to be getting new ones, um, so we're not going to tighten this one down. But once you get to this stage, you got your sway bar on. Um, you know, you have your, your strut. You know, you want to make sure these locking collars are tight uh, with the included tools. Um, and keep in mind when you're adjusting your height on this, you don't want to be messing with the spring. You actually turn the strut body in and out of the lower mount. Um, it's a little different than some coilovers, so just keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, uh, this car is going to be getting Cobra brakes that we don't have the, the parts for yet. But at this point, you could go ahead and put your uh, rotor back on and install your caliper with your pads and you're good to go. Uh, of course, at that point, uh, once you get the whole car assembled, you're going to want to get an alignment because everything's going to be off in your caster and camber department and that'll really affect your handling. And the whole point of installing these is to really help the handling of your Mustang. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the back part. Okay, so now the front suspension done, we're going to move on to the back. First part of the back is removing the wheel. On this particular car, there are 13 16 lug nuts. Um, your car may vary depending on year and wheel type. So now with the wheel out of the way, we can access our suspension. And uh, the first thing I want to make sure is we have the rear axle supported by a jack. Um, you know, of course, the car itself is safely up on jack stands. Um, you know, you want to be careful about where you put them. Um, subframe connectors and that kind of thing can change where they should be, but you want them to have a good, sturdy spot on the subframe. Um, so with the jack supporting the rear axle, we're going to go ahead and take out the lower mount uh, for the shock. Um, on this early car, we have a uh, Torx style or star socket bolt holding it up. And on the later cars with 8.8 .8 axle, it's sideways and you have a bolt and nut. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take this lower mount off right here. Okay, so now our axle is pretty loose um, to take the spring out. But first, we're going to get the shock out of our way and go up in the car. Now this particular car is a convertible. Um, so it's a little different on a hatch or a coupe car. You'd have to remove some trim out of the way, either in the trunk or inside the car. Um, but on this convertible, it's a little more difficult. And so we'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so we're inside the car, uh, attempting to take the top shock mount off. Now on some cars, uh, you may have to grab this uh, top piece here and use a wrench to loosen it uh, like I did. And then once that happens, you can uh, take this top nut off. Um, so we're actually going to zip this one off. Watch out. Okay, so now with the top bolt off, or sorry, top nut off, we're going to go ahead and take the 
retaining that off that holds the shot to the car. And now our shock has left the vehicle. Okay, so with the shock removed, um, the axle is now free to come down and we can remove this spring. Uh, this is an early car, you know, it's an 83, so it doesn't have an 8.8 .8 in it yet, um, but it's very similar to what you would see in any Vox body 79 to 93. And so I'm gonna lower the jack down, which lowers the axle, and we'll be able to take that spring out. And this is your spring isolator. Um, this is a good time if these are worn out to get new ones, either polyurethane or factory rubber uh, is up to you. But um, since it's out anyway, it's a good idea to replace it. So with the spring out, we're gonna go ahead and work on installing our new uh, coilover uh, adjustable shock and uh, spring. Okay, so we have our adjustable spring here. Um, this is how you know the pieces you're going to be looking at. So you have your adjustments here. Uh, we're going to start out about in the middle and uh, work our way down from there. Uh, you want to count your turns though um, so you can set the other side up at the same time at the same height. So this goes in with this factory plastic isolator and then you have either your stock one if you're keeping it or your new isolator on the bottom and your larger isolator at the top. And we've chosen to replace these while we're in here. So you set the bottom end first on the uh, raised portion of the lower control arm. And what we're gonna do here is use the jack to jack this up against the bottom of the car. Now, um, you'll see, you know, it's, it's easier to have two people so you can hold it into place. But all we're gonna do here is get it loosely setting up against the bottom of the car. Okay, so now we have the spring uh, loosely resting uh, in position. So we're gonna use this to set our shock height, which is next, um, which is gonna require us to install the new shock right here. Um, and we're gonna feed that up in there. But before you go to do that, you're gonna receive the shock like this, and you wanna do a little disassembly. So go ahead and take your uh, adjustment knob off here your nut off, and then this washer, and just this top uh, rubber bushing. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and feed the shock up into the car. Now there's a couple ways to hold this. Uh, luckily I have someone helping me. If you don't, um, you can you know use a bungee cord or a bolt wedge in the axle or hold it up. But uh, like I said, luckily I have someone helping me. So we're gonna go in the car here in a minute and put the nut on the top. Okay, so we've tightened our lock nut down. Uh, we've got a good squish on our little bushings here. You don't wanna tighten it too much um, because you can damage the bushings. As you can see here, you know, we have a good amount of squish that's not gonna rattle around, but not enough to really, you know, go crazy on the bushing. So once we have that done, uh, we're gonna take our adjustment knob here Set it down in there, and you turning only the uh, threaded part of the bottom. I'm gonna turn it till it stops, and we're good. Now, you know, it's up to you where you want to start off with setting these, but especially in a convertible, uh, it's a good idea to just go ahead and set them where you want them right now, since we're up in the top of the car. So we have ours set all the way to hard. Uh, that's what we're gonna start off with and work our way back soft. And we've done that in the front as well. So all four corners you want to have uh, even. I mean. It's up to you if you do want them different. Uh, maybe you know the front of the car harder, the back of the car softer, or vice versa, depending on uh, what you want to do with the car. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and button up inside and move down to the bottom of the car again. Back down underneath the car, uh, we've got our shock, I mean our spring loosely resting against the uh, top and uh, lower spring perches. Now we're gonna take our adjustable shock here and with the spring in place sitting here loosely and our jack holding up the axle, we're going to tighten this lower mount of the shock until our bolt holes line up. Now on an 8.8 .8 car, you'd have it this way with your bracket coming out. On this older Mustang uh, with, a, with an earlier, front ac or earlier rear axle, we're going to have it turned this way. So we've got our eye lined up here. We're gonna take our bolt 
and I'll put it through the hole here. Now we don't want the to tighten this just yet. Um, we want to get a load on the car, so make sure you have both sides done. And once you do, you can load the car up and, with the with the jack and tighten this this bolt down. But before that, you want to make sure you get your your lock collar down on here. And provided with these with this coilover kit is a coilover adjustment uh, key for both the front and rear. And you'll see, you know, so it looks like a big jaw with a hook on it. And you can use that to tighten and loosen these. And uh, you'll also find in there the lock nuts for these. They come in the same bag if, you're, if that's what you're looking for. And um, once you get to this step, you know, you're ready to load the car up. And we're going to go ahead and tighten these down in a second. So I'll show you how to do it. Uh, but then you'll be done. Okay, so we have our mower spring uh, under tension. And we have our shock under tension. The, the jack is holding up the rear of the car with the rear axle, so that's why you know it's under load. Uh, it's not quite as much as you would have going down the road, but it's enough for us to get everything tight. Okay, so now we have our shock in place, and we're gonna lock our collars down here, and as well as uh, this uh, spring right here. And as long as you do this to both sides at the same time, uh, we'll start off with our collars in the middle and work our way down from there. So wrapping things up here, guys, if you are looking for an affordable set of coilovers that will offer features typically found on more expensive hardware, well then you'll want to check out the V2s from SR Performance right here at AmericanMuscle.com.